People want to just enjoy their hair. It's hair. It grows back. What is the point of going on a natural hair journey? What is the point of growing your hair to be a certain length and you can't even wear it? People have begun to divest in the idea that we can only wear our natural hair. I would feel some type of way too if somebody was telling me that I was treating my hair all wrong when I felt like I found something that worked for my hair. A lot of people on the internet were trying to tell you about your hair and they had never seen your hair in real life or put their hands in your head a day in their life. Hey guys, what is up? It is Cam. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> All right, so in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we are going to be talking about the rise and fall of the natural hair community. And before we get into it, if you have not already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm officially back, guys. I know I took a little bit of a long break. There's not a lot going on, but I'm officially back, and it's time to get the ball rolling with more videos for you guys. I definitely miss you all. So please subscribe and click the notification bell so you can stay tuned and so you don't miss whenever I post and upload to this channel. Also, subscribe to my second channel. That is where I post all of my girly type of content and if you want to keep up with me outside of youtube you can follow me on all my social media everything will be on the screen and linked down below and without further ado let's get into it all right so let's talk about the rise and fall of the natural hair community because although i think that the natural hair community is still very much alive and well especially considering i am someone that considers themselves to be a part of the natural hair community like i mean look at me my hair is natural and most if not all of my videos you'll see my hair being natural like this is the primary way that i wear my hair so i think it's an interesting topic and an interesting concept about the natural hair community having a rise and then ultimately having a decline because what i've noticed especially on social media and in real life even that a lot of people are divesting in the natural hair community and that doesn't necessarily mean that people are not natural anymore or that majority of black women or people that have naturally curly hair are not natural anymore but i've just seen an influx of women leaving the natural hair community because of several different reasons and we're gonna get into all of that in today's video because i have a few talking points that i just want to touch upon like i want to get into it so i think whenever considering this conversation we should start by talking about the rise because this is where it all started for me i noticed the natural hair community gaining a lot of its popularity back when i was first starting high school that's when it became super duper popular on youtube there were literally black girls popping up everywhere creating natural hair content showing you how to style your hair showing you what products to use in your hair giving you recommendations based off of their findings on their journey and trying to take care of their hair there were so many people doing big chops and rocking TWAs and just trying to really take on the journey and I think that's kind of what the appeal in the first place was to the natural hair movement and the natural hair community is because a lot of people were getting rid of the relaxers or deciding that they were going to wear their hair how it naturally grew out of their scalp and I think not only was it freeing us from the shackles of relaxers considering that for a long time we used relaxers and straightening our natural hair as a way to assimilate but I think it also was kind of giving us a power back and allowing us to find another way in which to love our true and natural self and so when the natural hair community first sprouted on the internet it definitely was a lot of girls who had more kinky coily type hair and these are the girls that I'm talking about are in what we would now call the type 4 range because I think a lot of the stigma whenever it came to black hair whenever it came to naturally coily and kinky hair was that it was bad I think a lot of us for a long time were told that we did not have good hair or we were adjacent to other black girls or biracial girls who did have what was considered good hair and were constantly praised for it and so for us being people with tighter hair the type fours I think it was really an outlet to be able to learn what our hair actually looked like learn how to take care of our hair and learn how to embrace our hair and find out what worked for our hair aside from using hot tools and using chemicals. And I think this movement actually had a lot of strengths, especially when it was first starting out because it was able to build this community. It was able to start this movement and it really had a lot of momentum behind it because literally everyone was hopping on. I remember when the natural hair movement first started and everyone was literally flocking towards Cantu, like that was the go-to product. Like you what? Like it? You like it? What is my this right here. is this with your you know. What? Are, what? That's why I don't talk to your bro. 
to his gun. You, you, you know, we don't mess with Cantu nowadays. Like, it's not that great in the grand scheme of things and in comparison to other products, but we were all using Cantu back in the days. I'm pretty sure I can still, like, smell Cantu, even just by thinking about it. And I'm sure some of you guys can also smell it just by thinking about it. The same way that I think people can smell relaxers just by thinking about it or talking about it or smell something like pink lotion just by thinking about it or talking about it. Like, you get what I mean. And so I think this influx of people wanting to embrace and rock their natural hair, learn how to style it, learn how to take care of it, is really what catapulted and popularized the actual momentum. And so after a year or two of this kind of picking up steam, you started seeing so many different people making tutorials, doing big chops, like I mentioned before, just the whole nine. I feel like some notable natural hair YouTubers at that time were like Natural85, I still love her. African Beauty was a really, really big one that I love. And I mostly just know natural hair YouTubers from the ones that I used to watch based off of what my specific hair type was looking for because I mainly consumed content of girls and women that had hair that looked more similar to mine. But I know there are girls who are in the community out there who consumed all types of natural hair content regardless of the type hair or the type of curl that the actual content creator or YouTuber had. So this was just like a cute little time. Like we were all in our kumbaya stage. We were having fun. We were learning how to take care of our hair. We were just like in this kind of state of euphoria, the state of bliss, the state of ignorance. And I feel like as the years moved on, it started to sour and it started to become a little bit less nice and pretty. Like I feel like the smoke and mirrors started to be revealed a little bit and we were able to see the flaws and the faults and pretty much most of the tribulations of what the natural hair community was and was starting to become. So let's get into the texturism of it all because by golly gee, I feel like texturism has never left the black community specifically, but I think it was more so heightened and really pulled to the forefront when the natural hair movement and community started to rise up and start to become very popular because like I said before, a lot of people were starting to categorize girls and women with their natural hair into categories of good hair and bad hair. And we all know what good hair means. We know what people meant by good hair and we know what people meant by bad hair. And I think a lot of the texturism fell on the type four girlies and more specifically on the girls that had 4C hair. The natural hair movement is for black women with type four, most specifically 4C hair. You never had to perm your little ringlets, okay? Be honest, nobody was telling you that your waves, your waves were not socially acceptable. Let's stop, let's stop the cap. I'm not really trying to sit here like, they made me hate my hair. What do you mean they made, no they didn't. They did not make you hate your hair. Black women had their scalps burning from the relaxers. You threw your hair up in a bun. There's a difference. There is a very stark difference. Let's stop acting. Hair can be wavy too. No, it can't. Wavy is not equal curly. Wavy equals wavy. Let's stop acting like, you know what I'm saying? Stop. How, how black women get pushed out of their own movement? Crazy. And so I think a lot of people were experiencing texturism and whether that meant they were experiencing texturism because they couldn't find any content creator or YouTuber that actually had hair types similar to them or whether they were experiencing texturism in their real lives because of the sudden switch from having relaxed hair or having straight hair, heat trained hair to having their naturally curly hair and it not being what people were expecting it to be based off of what they were seeing on the internet. I have a couple things to say about this topic. One, yes, like obviously in a vacuum or natural hair isn't revolutionary but in a society where it's so anti-black yes our natural hair is revolutionary too the natural hair movement wasn't for my hair it was never for 4c hair I, the natural hair movement was a twist out movement if your hair was not 3c or below you twisted that out to make it look like that so until I could wash my 4c hair and just go out like that no problem just be like that without any issue then the natural hair movement was a success, but that's not the case. Also, have you noticed a rise in wigs since people did switch their natural hair? It's like people don't even wanna show it. So I don't see the point. That's what I was gonna do if I had my natural hair, mostly wear wigs, cause that's what I felt comfortable in. So I'm just being honest with myself. I'm sorry I'm not bigger than that but I, that's just the truth. Because although I think the natural hair started as a way for girls with super tight coils to embrace their hair, I think at some point it was overtaken and overrun by girls that had looser curl patterns. And I'm not necessarily saying that these girls with looser curl patterns were not allowed to be a part of the community or a part of the movement, because I do think that they have their place and that they should have a place because whenever it comes to naturally curly hair, it definitely is a spectrum. And I think there is something for everyone on that spectrum, especially considering 
considering that everybody has different hair types and we can kind of categorize hair types by the way the curls look by how loose or tight they are and so of course like we needed those people with looser curl types as well but I think the damage came from people praising and pedestalizing these girls that had looser curl patterns over the ones that had the tighter curl patterns it was never for 4c hair I, the natural hair movement was a twist out movement if your hair was not emphasis on twist out movement because I didn't really deep it but like when I was transitioning, I still had some permed hair. It'd be like flexi rods, bantu rods, stuff like that. Then when I was like fully natural, it was a twist out. It's like twist out was my go-to style. Like I did not do anything but a twist out if my hair was like out. And then like it's just until last year I got comfortable like with the fro, no definition, nothing like that. But even me like wearing my fro, I do it by blowing out my hair to some degree. Like I wish I could get to a place where I don't have to ma manipulate my hair for it to for me to feel beautiful. And like, I'm kind of getting there, but like, I, I, I can't just put water on my hair, put like um, some gel or mousse or whatever and walk out the door and feel pretty. Like, so I just, I don't know. I feel like that's the next step as a, um, as a community, but I don't think we're gonna ever get there because and again not only was this on the internet but this was in real life i feel like i've heard a lot of testimonials from girls just saying how it's harder for men to find them attractive when they have their naturally curly hair if it's naturally more tightly curled or naturally more coily or naturally more kinky in comparison to someone who has a looser curl pattern and so we started to see a lot of problems and i don't think these problems necessarily were the ones that started the decline of the natural hair community i feel like that came a lot later but these are just some of the hiccups that i noticed as this movement had gained popularity and was kind of sustaining this momentum and cementing itself as a core part of the black community. And so then we have the peak of the natural hair community, which I would consider it to be somewhere around 2018, 2017, 2018 time, where the popular natural hair creators had cemented themselves as the natural hair gurus of YouTube. Like we were literally going to YouTube University to see what these girls had to say, to learn what they had to say about their hair. Like these were the people who were teaching us how to do our hair. And it had become so popular that most people that I saw in my everyday life were natural or were at least trying to embark on some sort of natural hair journey. Like natural hair was all over the black community. And for me personally, like it was super inspiring to see a lot of black girls and black women rocking their natural hair and feeling comfortable enough to go out with their natural hair, especially considering that when I was younger, the most natural hair exposure that I got was my mom. She was always natural. But other than that, most black girls, most black women, Women had straight hair and for me I knew I had curly hair growing up but I liked my hair better and I liked myself better the way I looked when I had straight hair because that's just what I was trained to believe but as I got older and started to form an appreciation for my hair because of what the natural hair community was doing I feel like this was the peak especially after girls had a couple of years to practice and a couple of years of knowledge under their belt like people were starting to actually master their natural hair at this point and I would consider this to probably be the best years of the natural hair community. I feel like we were seeing a bunch of threads on Twitter about how to take care of natural hair, a bunch of threads on Twitter about appreciation for all different hair types, especially type 4 because I feel like it was the category that got the most hate, but in getting the most hate, we were also trying to do the most uplifting in order to combat that. But we just were seeing natural hair literally everywhere on red carpets, in movies, literally everywhere on magazines. It was insane, but it was literally the best thing I feel like for black girls, especially whenever it comes to representation presentation and seeing people that look like you and have hair like you in the media. And so then in our little flow chart of the rise and fall, we get to right after the climax of everything, when people start getting really concerned about this little thing I like to call the natural hair police. I think whenever it comes to the natural hair police, it's this phenomenon that kind of came out of nowhere, but honestly, I feel like we should have seen it coming. Like we should have expected this considering that we were on such a high and we were doing so well for so long the natural hair police came and ruined everything basically because I feel like these people were so concerned about what you could and could not do with your hair whether you were the hair type that you were saying that you were or whether you were something different like a lot of people on the internet were trying to tell you about your hair and they had never seen your hair in real life or put their hands in your head a day in their life and so I think this is really frustrating for a lot of people because it's like how are you gonna tell me about my hair when you've 
literally never had to do with my hair. And so I think this is probably one of the first instances where people started being put off by the natural hair community. And I also started seeing that this is where some people started divesting a little bit from the natural hair community because I think it just kind of got overplayed a little bit, especially the natural hair movement aspect of it, not necessarily being natural and being a part of the community, but just the movement in and of itself. It was played out, it started to become old, the trend was dying a little bit. And to add the natural hair police or the natural hair Nazis, as a lot of people like to call them, on top of that was just like the icing of this awful cake. Because honestly, I don't think anybody likes to be shamed for their hair, likes to be insinuated that their hair is bad hair, even after trying to create this relationship with their hair where they love it regardless of what it looks like, regardless of whether it's all styled up or if it's just in its shrunken state. I think there are a lot of people that started to hate for no apparent reason. Uh, you know why I don't do my edges? because they don't want to be done. If they wanted to be done, then they would slick with Eco Styler gel. But I have to look for cement to lay them down and then they stay for five minutes. So clearly they don't want to do it and I don't force people to do stuff they don't want to do. And again, this is what turned a lot of people off because they're embarking on this journey in order to try and love themselves or and try to embrace their natural selves and people are just talking crap about them. And then it just kept falling and falling and falling down from there. And then we get to about 2020 and 2021 where there are even more rules surrounding what we can and cannot do with our hair, what we should and should not do with our hair. And all of the things that we learned the past few years seem to be negligible considering what these people are telling us we should do with it now and I think this became really confusing for a lot of people not only confusing but frustrating and it seemed like it was too good to be true like how are you gonna tell me that my wash day that has taken me eight hours literally since the time I became natural I'm supposed to cut that down into less than an hour including styling and drying like I think a lot of people were just taken aback and thrown off by these claims especially considering that we've been using oils and butters on our hair since we started like there was a whole trend with coconut oil there's a whole trend with olive oil there there was a whole trend with the Aztec clay mask. There was a whole trend with shea butter. Like we had been using this stuff on our hair for literally years, literally since the movement started, literally since we first big chop and started growing our hair. And now all of a sudden we're not allowed to use it anymore. And I think of course there are instances where we have to learn and unlearn things in order to swap them out for things that are going to be better than us. Yes, I 100% agree. And I also think that to some extent, cutting out oils and butters from my hair routine specifically has been better for my hair slash I have not really noticed that big of a difference and so I think it was something that was worth giving a shot but because people were so adamant about not being allowed to do this anymore and having to completely change your routine and redo things and unlearn people were not having that and honestly it's hard to change it is hard to be accepting of change especially when it is sudden and I would feel some type of way too if somebody was telling me that I was treating my hair all wrong when I felt like I found something that worked for my hair after trying to learn it for years and years and years because I feel like it went from no oils and no butters to to you can't air dry, to protective styles not actually being protective styles. And people just were like, you know what, I'm over it. People were starting to become over it. And that's fair because all of the things that we knew seem to be untrue at this point. And this is a point in which we were learning that everything we knew about our hair was somehow wrong according to the hair care professionals. And it's almost like they were coming out of the woodworks with this information. Like where were you when this movement started back in 2013 and 2014? Like where were you at the very beginning? Like you had to hold on to this information up until now, why could you not tell us this sooner? And I genuinely feel like that's how a lot of people were feeling. And I also think that people are just tired of all the rules and have begun to divest in the idea that we can only wear our natural hair. And I think that's what we're seeing now. People have begun to divest in the idea that we can only wear our natural hair. Cue wigs, cue protective styles, cue the return of relaxers, cue the return of getting our hair straightened every two weeks and getting these blowouts and these intricate heat styles. People are doing a lot of things to their hair that we weren't previously seeing them doing in the past like five to ten years because of this natural hair movement because they are simply tired of being told that the only way to rock their natural hair is in its curly state and honestly I feel for most people because it is really hard to master your natural hair it took me seven years so I can only imagine what other girls feel like where they still feel like they haven't mastered it and they've been on the journey they feel like their hair isn't growing or that they can't grow hair or that they're growing all this hair just to hide it because they're not allowed to do anything with it. It's 
almost like what is the point of going on a natural hair journey what is the point of growing your hair to be a certain length and you can't even wear it and enjoy it and experiment with it and do different things with it once it gets to the length that you've always dreamed and wanted it to be and imagined it to be and I think too we were putting a lot of pressure on girls to be natural because I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with relaxers even though I do have a video about black women hating their hair I think that's a totally different conversation but whenever it comes to relaxers and you truly having to do what is best for you your schedule your hair and everything like that I think there's nuance in the situation but I also think that people are tired of being told what to do whenever it comes to their hair people want to just enjoy their hair it's hair it grows back and it doesn't necessarily have to be taken so seriously all the time but I think whenever it comes to the natural hair community it's almost like you have to do it one way and if you're not doing it that way then you're doing it the wrong way like at this point people just want to wear their silk presses at this point people just want to wear their wigs at this point people just want to wear their braids they want to wear whatever style they want to without hearing people tell them why they can't or why they shouldn't and without people telling them the bad things it's going to do to their natural hair or their hair in its natural state they don't even care and I think that's valid reading an article on Harper's Bazaar titled in the natural hair community exclusivity is a moving target and it was a really good article basically kind of venturing into the lives of a couple of different women and their experience in the natural hair community and everything of what they had to say and one thing that stuck out to me in this article particularly was when they were talking about relaxers and this is what it reads for everything wonderful the natural hair movement has brought us the conversation has remained nuanced oftentimes going natural meant stockpiling an arsenal of new products and dedicating hours to the art of hairstyling but what about those who do not wish to spend a small fortune on products and services in the hopes of changing the way their hair looks a case in point a tweet from earlier this year by at the real Shanae asked her followers about the interesting resurgence of relaxed hair. Cora Harrington, an author and lingerie expert who goes by at lingerie underscore attic, responded with her take. The natural hair movement eventually created a lot of pressure around what natural hair should look like, she said, rather than encouraging people to embrace their own textures and curl patterns. The article continues to say, the thread that followed sparked a passionate conversation around the natural hair movement's intentions. If you love your unnatural hair, whether that be straightened, colored, or bald, is there anything wrong with that? Can you still be a part of the community? Only through understanding the frustrations with it can we create a more inclusive movement. So I thought this article was super interesting and super insightful just based off of the simple fact that it was able to explore different women's experiences within the natural hair community and it was able to give more perspectives. And I've personally read through Twitter threads about the natural hair community and how toxic it had become and how hard it had become to be a part of the community because people were getting bullied, people were being harassed, people were getting policed, people were getting attacked by the natural hair Nazis. And I get it. It can be extremely exhausting, especially when you don't have a hair type that's considered to be desirable. I'm about to talk about something that might be uh, controversial in the natural hair community, but I feel like it needs to be said. When the natural hair movement started, um, it was highlighting the fact that black women were specifically singled out negatively regarding their hair in the workplace and school and a lot of other institutions. The entire point of the natural hair movement was for black women women to wear their natural hair thereby forcing society to accept it so black women wouldn't feel the need to wear braids weave wigs in order to look acceptable and presentable to the rest of society not only was it giving black women permission to feel comfortable and accept their own natural hair but it was also forcing society to accept it as well it was there to say my hair just the way it is is professional because even if we look on google now this is what we see Keep the difference. Now times are changing, so those Google results aren't as glaring as they were a few years ago, but that point is still very valid. Black hair naturally and black hairstyles are seen as unprofessional. So back to the natural hair movement itself. This natural hair space is also being claimed by white women. Now don't get me wrong, the natural hair movement empowered thousands of women to accept their natural hair, and that wasn't just black women. But there is a distinct difference between black natural hair and any other race of natural hair. Especially in America, the way race 
race has completely shaped our society, our criminal justice system, our economic system. Hair in the black community is so much more than just saying, oh, I wanna wear my curls now because I like them. And I see tons of white women on TikTok and Instagram doing all of these curly hair routines that were originated by black creators. And I am all for accepting your curls and doing all of these routines to actually show what your natural hair can do. I love it. But at the same time, I think being aware of the distinct spaces in which you fit into regarding the natural hair movement is really important. Because even for me, I know I'm privileged as a light-skinned black woman with looser textured hair compared to a dark-skinned woman with 4C hair. Beauty standards and texturism benefit me as they do for white women. I guess all I'm trying to say is be aware of where you stand privilege wise and also be aware of where you stand in regards to these movements. Um, just know what spaces are for you and know where your privilege lies and be respectful of that in any space. I think a lot of people would consider my hair type to be desirable, but I think I catfish a little bit because I wear my hair in a twist out most of the time. And so it looks looser than it actually is, but I have a pretty tight curl pattern. You just wouldn't know it because I wear my hair like this. But I think I would be treated a lot differently if I wore my hair in its fully natural state versus how I'm treated when I wear my hair like this. I get a lot of compliments like this. I get a lot of questions about how I take care of my hair like this, but I think people would consider it to be unkept if I just wore it in its really naturally curly shrunken state. There's a difference and I think we are all aware, like acutely aware of that difference. And because we are aware of that difference, we act accordingly and we decide to wear our hair in states that make us feel more comfortable and we like to wear our hair in states that make us feel beautiful, which I feel like all black girls and black women deserve to feel beautiful because we have such a history of people telling us that we are not. And I think whenever it comes to the natural hair community, it was this movement that was created and that was started in order for us to find a way to embrace our beautiful curls and find a way to embrace this beauty that we were finding through our natural textures and curl patterns. But I think it eventually turned into somewhat of a monster that consumed anyone and everyone that wasn't willing to follow the status quo whenever it came to their natural hair. And I honestly think that is what caused the fall of the natural hair community. So a lot more people, especially that I've noticed recently, are starting to explore the world of locks, which I think is so cool and so interesting, especially considering that locking your hair is a whole entire journey on its own. I know a lot of people lock their hair, they start off with twists or they'll go ahead and get it instantly locked. Some people will add extensions so they don't have to go through the baby lock phase. People are doing all types of things, but I think it's the same thing or similar thing to what we were doing when the natural hair movement first started and when we first started to build a community of people with natural hair. And I think the rise in black people, black girls, black women starting to get locks and exploring the world of having locks is something that not only of course makes you still a part of the community, but it's just something that's also different that we need. It's that diversity that we need. It is forcing us to learn how to be more inclusive to people who don't necessarily want to wear their hair like we wear ours. And I think that is honestly one of the best parts about being someone that has curly hair and about being being someone that has the option to do so many different things to my hair no matter what the style is just simply based off of how versatile it truly is that is the beauty of natural hair and it sucks to see that the community had a rise like I would want to live in that rise forever because at the time it just felt like this community of people where we all had the same goal and the same mission to love our hair to learn how to take care of our hair to embrace our hair and to go on a journey with our hair but whenever it came to the fall, I think that's when we all start to notice the flaws and all of the weak spots in the community that we had built. And so I think that is what caused the rise and fall of the natural hair community. All right, you guys, so that is it for this video. Please, please, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know your opinion on the rise and fall of the natural hair community. What did you like best about it? What did you like least about it? Are you somebody that has natural hair yourself? What is your go-to style? Like, let me know all the, let me know all the details. I want to know everything. I also want to, again, formally apologize for being gone for so long. I miss you guys so much and I'm so excited to get back into making videos and putting up content because I say this in all of my videos and almost all of my videos. You guys know this. I love starting conversations like these and just hearing what you guys have to say, being able to get my opinions out there and hearing what your opinions are. And so just talk to me in the comments. Let me know what you think. Also, if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and comment this emoji. That way I'll know you made it this far in the video. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you never miss another one of my uploads. Also, if you want to see my more girly content, my vlogs and things like that, check out my second channel. I also post a lot of natural hair content over
over there as well so if you want to know how i get my hair like this that's over there and if you want to keep up with me outside of youtube you can follow me on all my social media everything will be on the screen and down below and that is it thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it don't forget to be the light and i will see you in my next one bye